Welcome to the new year. It's 2024. I have been busy, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, one of my goals for this year is to make a very, a more realistic upload schedule for myself because clearly the weekly uploads, I think just completely caved in on themselves around the time that the business my husband and I started um, together last year started to pick up. <laughs> we started to do a lot more events and travel for work. And then of course I work full time on top of that. So between the two, there was no time for much of anything else. I mean, it was a struggle just to maintain my workout schedule. So any extras, I mean, I, I kind of, I won't say I stopped knitting, but I definitely wasn't knitting with the fervor that I was knitting with in the beginning of the year. And I definitely did not do as much with YouTube, clearly. So I think this year's goal, since I now, you know, the business is a known factor now, I would say that this year's goal is to be more mindful of my time and my schedule and realistic about how I need to fit my other hobbies in around my responsibilities. So with that said, to set this up, I'd like to go through my little journal here. So I actually went, I'm filling out like the week schedule here because it's the first obviously I am off today but I'm going back to work tomorrow and I wanted to plan out my workouts and put a little bit of the to-do things that I didn't get done on this week so I didn't forget about them but I also went ahead and went back to my goals from last year any of you who watched this video um last year's edition of this video will have seen these so one thing I really wanted to quickly do was go over my last year's goals and then sort of compare them to the goals I've loosely drawn out for this year and see how well I did. But also again, with that thinking of, hey, we're looking for attainable, not to say I did poorly, I would say uh, I reached a lot of the goals that I set last year, which is awesome. And it's natural to have some things that you have to put off or that you don't make it. It's just, we want to aspire to something so we're not just out here shooting, you know, at no targets, right? So I don't think that I would say I did poorly last year. However, I'd like to be a little bit more intentional this year with the goals that I set. So these goals are a little lighter, I would say, because I have a lot of work things going on that, again, the business is a known factor this year. Um, so I can't be as lofty with my personal goals. <laughs> Uh, but I still, of course, want to have goals. Like I said, you need something to aim for. So let's compare and contrast, shall we? So my first goal that I wrote here last year is dress how you want. Continue to build out closet and purchase wish list items is the entire thing. I think I did a really good job of that. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a check mark here because I made a point last year to purchase things with intention. So I stopped buying fast fashion items as much as I could. I was reading labels on things because I was making, trying to make a shift to more organic materials with clothing, with regards to clothing. So cotton, linen, wool. I now know I can't wear sheep's wool. There was a whole episode with my knitting last year where I learned that I cannot wear any wool that is from a sheep. I've known I've been allergic to wool. I have like a skin irritant situation with any wool that I wear, but it's sheep specifically. So I can wear alpaca. I can wear uh, cashmere, which I think is goat. I can wear basically a wool that comes from any other animal except for a sheep. Um, so all of that to say, I've been learning more about the materials that go into clothes making and trying to buy clothes that are made out of good, natural, long lasting materials. That's a little tidbit for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something cool that came out of the dress the way you want goal that I had for last year. So that's number one. Number two, I did speak up more and have confidence. And this was in work and social life. I will say that I accomplished that one because I have, well, for background, my manager had a baby last year. And so she was on maternity leave for four months. And she gave me some of her responsibilities, she divvied them up amongst the team, but the one that she gave me was like to lead our team and to run meetings. So she gave me a lot of her meetings and I was supposed to be kind of the spokesperson for our 
team, which obviously, as you can imagine, very much challenged my come out of your shell and speak up more problem. So I definitely would say that that was something I was able to, to attack from a work perspective. From a social perspective, I don't know, it could be social and work. We started a business. We've been doing a lot of events, a lot of conferences. I mean, booths where we're talking to people. So I can't say it bothers me any less, but I definitely feel like I worked on that last year. So I'm giving myself a check mark for both of those categories. Then number three is update website portfolio resume. Oh, that's gonna have to move over to this year because no, that did not happen. But like I said, we started business. Number four is build an app. Have not done that. But I think we have the vehicle for it now because at this point it was just like build an app. What app? Who knows? Just do it. It'd be cool. Now we have a business and I think that there are some ideas around the business that would lead to us building an app that like makes sense. So I haven't built the app yet, but I'm closer, I think, than I was last year when I wrote this down. So that's cool. So those were my start goals since I broke my goals up this way last year. Let's go into the continue now, which is three. There is continue learning and improving at ballet. I have an arrow towards point. Obviously, I wanted to work towards point and improve flexibility with an arrow towards splits. This is fun. This is a good one. Um, I went to ballet class. I should actually count, but I was just doing my workout journal here. So this is my workout log of how I keep track of my workouts. It just helps me to not anxiously compare myself to other women in class and online if I have my stats sort of written out so I can compare myself to myself. You know, look year over year, month over month and see how I've progressed rather than looking at people who have their you know, over splits and are 18 and feel bad about how miserably behind I am. <laughs> so this is something I started to do seriously. The end of 2022, but especially in 2023, every month I do this, it's like, these are the dates, the workouts I'm trying to do, and I mark off for every day I do them. And then I have a notes section where I write basically what went well and what went poorly. And then I have my splits tracker here. So I can tell you from looking at my journal distinctively that I have made progress on that goal. It wasn't a goal with like a strict intention. I definitely, I definitely just kind of said improve with no metric, but I, since I was taking notes here in this journal, I can say that I have improved. So a little over a year ago now, in December of 2022, I was 15 inches away from the floor in my right split, 13 inches away in my left split, so with my left foot in front, and my middle split was 20 inches away. I am chronically inflexible when I tell you. Like, I don't think people understand how inflexible I am. Even people who say they're inflexible are more flexible than I am. It's been part of the problem of attacking my flexibility my whole life because people will just say like, touch your toes. And I couldn't touch my toes, but they didn't know how to tell me how to get to touching my toes, you know? So it's like to then progress from a baseline I don't have, they'd kind of just uh, they'd shrug at me and they didn't know what to do. So I've taken it upon myself to build my own curriculum for flexibility that included modifications to get to those baseline skills. I'm happy to say I can now touch my toes and then some working on getting palms flat to the ground. Um, but yeah, my splits have come a long way since then. So the last time I measured my splits was December 17th. So that was December 7th of 2022. This is December 17th of 2023. And I am now six inches from the ground from 13. So sorry, 15. So I went from 15 inches away to six inches away on my right side. Went from that 13 number to seven inches away on my left side. And my middle splits went from 20 to 13 inches away from the ground. That's progress. <laughs> I now look like somebody who's working on their splits versus looking like somebody who's doing a lunge. So that's very exciting. I hope we'll, uh, we'll definitely be continuing to work on that. But I think through this entire process, because objectively, I haven't made that much progress, but I think in terms of how I attack this whole splits thing, I've learned a lot about myself, about what I will do, which I think is a big part of working out, something I talked about in my workout 
you know, ballet as an adult video, but you have to kind of pick something that's realistic for yourself. If you're not a gym person, don't tell yourself you're going to go to the gym four days a week because you're going to go once and be like, cool, I did it. And now I don't want to do that ever again. And you're not going to go the rest of the week. You know, that's why ballet works for me in a way that a lot of other things don't. I genuinely love ballet. So it's easy for me to go to a ballet class and then going to the gym makes sense because I'm working on things for ballet class. So now I don't think of working out as a chore. It's like something I enjoy, something that's part of my day. So same thing with flexibility. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you have to stretch every day. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. I've just learned that I'm not that person. I will stretch a little bit every day. Like I definitely move and do kind of like mobility stuff. That's very casual, low key, easy breezy. But I'm not trying to deep stretch every day, which is what I need to do to get my splits. I'm not just trying to maintain, you know, I'm trying to improve, which means you kind of push yourself and it's hard and it's painful and you're sore the next day. And it's, it's a lot. And I just have realized that I'm not going to do that every day. So I changed my routine. And this is why the notes section is so important, because I actually write this stuff down so I know what, what I was doing. But in the November of this year just passed, I changed my routine from stretch every day to stretching, I'm working on three skills. I've picked three skills to target and I was working on each respective skill twice a week. So that's six days a week that covers off the six days a week that I work out, which is also covered in my ballet video, but I do a three ballet class and then three like kind of gym sesh slash yoga slash Pilates, like kind of whatever I feel like session. And that's my weekly split. So that equals six days that I'm working out a week. It also gives me room to like skip a day if I really need to. And then I'm still getting five days in or four days in, which is really good. Um, so then to match against those workout days, I also try to stretch six days out of the week. I'll do, like I said, light stretching in the morning or quick stretching a session at the gym or after ballet class. But my stretching that I really deep stretch in where I try to get my splits is later, sometimes after dinner in the evening, after I've had a hot shower or something like it's not I'm not trying to pair it with my workouts anymore, which is another thing I learned. You can't always fit a stretching session right after a class. I mean, if you're talking about I went to a class physically, sometimes the studio is closing and it's time to go home, which is what happens in my Saturday ballet class. Like we're the last class of the day and they're closing the doors as we're leaving and turning off the lights. I can't exactly now sit on the ground and take up 30 minutes getting my stretch routine in. So I kind of do, you know, boom, 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 boom and get in the car and go home. So by the time I'm home, I'm cool now. My muscles aren't really interested in stretching <laughs> and I'm not, I'm tired. You know, I run errands after that class. It's just the whole thing. So scheduling wise, stretching rarely happened after that Saturday class. But with this method where I kind of separate it from my workout, I could go, go do whatever I need to do, come home, do a little warm up and stretch as a separate event to my workout. So it was like all of a sudden way more flexible and easy for me to just fit it in where I can fit it in. So that was the first thing I did. But then with this split of the skills, that means I'm working out every day. I'm stretching every day, but I'm not stretching the same things every day, which is what the soreness can kind of deter you from doing. So for instance, if you're like me and you're working on your splits, that means you're stretching your hamstrings your quads, your hip flexors every day. Your hip flexors, hamstrings, and quads are going to get tired. They're going to be like, girl, no. And you're going to have days where it just feels impossible. And then those days can discourage you from trying again. And that would what was what would happen to me. I'd have like one good stretch day. Then the next day I'd be super sore and I wouldn't want to stretch. And it would just, you know, perpetuate itself in this cycle where I'd stretch and then it would suck and then I wouldn't go back to it. And then I'd come back to it and be like, oh, it's great. And so I just wasn't stretching enough. Now I'm giving myself rest days. So I stretch, splits, then I rest splits and stretch my back. So the three skills I'm working on are my front splits, middle splits, and my bridge. I used to be able to drop into a bridge as a kid. I can't anymore. But back flexibility is a big part of overall body flexibility, but also a big part of ballet, your arabesques and whatnot. So I now work on back flexibility, and that's kind of my rest day from splits. So my legs get a break and I work on my back <laughs> and it's great. So I'm not super, super sore going into each session, but I'm still doing something. So yeah, that's what I did. And I also incorporated PNF stretching, which is the contract relax kind of number. That has made huge, huge um, gains for me. In November alone, I think I went down like three inches. Looking back. Yeah from nine to seven on the right, 
from nine to eight on the left. Yes, so it was the nine to seven I was remembering. But yeah, I made huge progress when I incorporated PNF. Before that, I think I had plateaued around nine inches for like three months and I was getting very frustrated. So all of that to say, it's been a journey to figure out what works for me. So if I had the like method that I have now, at the beginning of last year, I probably would have my splits already, but because I had to kind of try and trial and error all these different methods, I took quite a while to make the progress I made. But progress is progress. Whether it's numbers in terms of how low you are or it's routines in terms of finding out what works for you, I think that coming out of that year with the tried and true routine I have now and schedule, I feel like this is the year, so. <laughs> Very excited about that. The next skills, excuse me, goals I had on here were knitting. I wanted to make a sweater, a cardigan, an outfit, and do color work. Out of those four things, I did a sweater. I gave it to my sister for Christmas. I have an outfit almost done. I'm working on some shorts that will go with a top. Um, I did not get to a cardigan or color work. So those have moved over to this year. <laughs> and then YouTube, I had weekly schedule uh, ha, ha, that I think it has become clear I am not going to be able to maintain. So YouTube is still a goal this year, but a lot of this leads, as you can see nicely, into my goals for 2024. I need to change the cadence and I need to make it something I can actually realistically stick to. Working on thinking that through, it could be bi-weekly, it could be monthly. I'm not really sure right now, but I definitely would like to continue doing YouTube. I just don't want it to be this chore <laughs> this big horrible thing in the back of my mind on top of everything else I'm doing and I'm not going to sacrifice ballet or like work things for YouTube I've learned that this year so it needs to be something that I can kind of ease into my schedule without too much complication and difficulty so that all leads very well into my 2024 goals 2024 oh I didn't give myself check marks but I did get check marks for my splits, my knits, and my YouTube. I'm giving myself a check just because I did do YouTube last year. Uh, but yeah, we'll work on cadence. So turning the literal page to 2024 goals this year, I have from ballet, I have my get on point. I'm very, very close, I think. I've been doing pre-point training. So a lot of foot and ankle exercises for a few months now i've been doing those daily and i am going to apply to a program this month so if i don't make it they'll tell me why and i'll be able to work on that stuff and try again later but basically i'm telling myself this year we're getting on point it's happening i'm going to put some serious serious uh grit <laughs> and intention and just really really work towards this goal because i really want that to be a thing I can start working on. I have knit a cardigan, so I'm gonna add color work to this because that was a goal I did not do last year and it's something I would like to, you know, continue working on my knitting. Reach front splits. So I know I said I'm working on my front splits, my middle splits, and my back bend. I don't wanna kill myself by telling myself I'm gonna reach all three of those in one year. I'm, but I'm very, very close to my middle splits. I mean, if you were following that math with me, I went down 15 to six, right? So that is over half of how far I was away I've eaten. So that means, and that was a bad year where I wasn't really sure what I was doing half the time. I was trying different things every month. So now with a structured program I can dedicate myself to, I'm very confident. I really should write split slash over splits because my plan is to continue working on my splits after I get them. I find that a lot of people who are training for their splits, they stop at splits. They stop at, oh, I can touch the ground when I'm super warmed up. But what I've noticed about dancers and gymnasts, people for whom having the splits is actually a functional part of their sport, they continue. They don't stop at split, they keep going. So that's what I want to do. Basically, the goal is to not just be able to do my splits after like a 30 minute warm up. My goal is to have my splits out of bed in the morning. And in order to do that, you need to keep working on further and further splits. Basically, 
your resting flexibility and your I'm super warm flexibility are never going to be the same. There's always going to be a little bit of discrepancy between the two. So if you want to have a certain skill cold, you have to have more than that warm. So I'm going to keep going. So split slash over split split. Like I said, very, very confident I can get that this year. I'm starting to feel the stretch in the right places, which was a big issue for me. I used to get a lot of like nerve pain and tension in spots that it didn't really make sense. So it made it really hard to make progress because I don't think I was stretching the right spot. That was over the course of my life. Last year, I kind of figured it out, but even more so towards the end of the year, I feel like I've really found the space in my hips, found the back position and everything. It's a little different for everybody, you know, because we've all got different bodies. So when you figure it out, it's like, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like. And now that I'm there, very confident. So I've told myself my front splits in particular, middle splits are notoriously harder, but in order to ease that transition, I've also said pancake. Pancakes kind of have a halfway between your splits and your, your middle and front splits because it's not a full middle split, um, but it does work on the mobility you need for that. But it also has some similar muscles like your hamstrings that are involved in it that you need for front splits. So working in those working on those two skills in conjunction can be really good for middle split training later. If you already have good mobility in all those muscles, then focusing on your inner thighs by itself for your middle splits is a lot easier. And it's like, I don't know, easier to wrap your head around how it's supposed to feel and all that good fun stuff. So I've told myself pancake. Middle split this year, I don't know. I have made significant progress, but I know the middle splits are ornery. They take even the most flexible people quite a while to reach. So I'm just not gonna put that pressure on myself. <laughs> I put an adjacent skill on here and then I'll continue to work on my back flexibility for my bridge and my upper body strength, really. It's a lot of other things going to your bridge and my middle splits, but maybe that'll be 2025, who knows? You know, we'll see. But yeah, that's a goal. Then meal prep. I've told myself I need to meal prep more. We're pretty good at cooking at home, but we are definitely like a cook and have leftovers for tomorrow, maybe the next day kind of household. I'd like to cook bulk and have food for like the entire week if we need it. Because when we get really busy with the business, that's when we tend to like get Chick-fil-A on the way home, which isn't inherently bad. Like I said, I don't think we're really ordering that much. We've definitely cut down from how bad we were in the pandemic, but we could do better. You know, there's always room for improvement. So I think that that's something I want to focus on this year is just easy, accessible meal prep recipes. Work on doing it once every couple weeks and see where we go from there. Hopefully I'll eventually have like a repository of meal prepping recipes that are easy to use that I can rely on for busy times in our schedules. And that'll make it something that will happen <laughs> versus right now where it's something I kind of have to plan for that just doesn't happen. So that's one of my other goals then. Build an app is still on here because that carried over from last year and YouTube I already talked on, but need to pick a cadence and stick to it this year. We started it last year. Let's figure out how we can keep that momentum going and not have it just be something that falls off every month that I get busy. So yeah, those are the goals for this year. They all feel very attainable to me. I'm really excited to tackle this year and just have some awesome progress be made. We have so many ideas about the business that we've talked about, like doing different events. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see more from us in that um, space, follow pitchplay.co on Instagram, and you can see a lot of the content we produce for the business. You can also follow us on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, that is a big reason. I don't post on YouTube quite as often, so feel free to see me over there. Um, but yeah, Great ideas for the business. Like I said, I'm super confident going into this year that I can achieve two of the biggest goals I've had for my ballet. It's basically ballet, right? Splits and point, but those are two of the biggest goals that I've had this entire time I've been on this ballet journey. So to reach that this year would be super, super special. I'm very excited to see where those two goals can lead me. And hey, if I don't reach them this year, they will just over into next year. So they're never going away. It's just a matter of when. But uh, yeah, so I hope all of that inspires you to write your own journey and your own goals for 2024 um, and, you know, just have an amazing year. I think New Year's give us 
time to reflect, you know, you take off work, you get some rest and relaxation in, and just attack everything you want to achieve with fresh, a fresh perspective after some nice time off. So that's what I try to do. I try not to put too much pressure on myself to have an amazing New Year's Eve party and stuff like that anymore. It's like, just chill, because you know you're not gonna get this much time off anytime soon. Relax, refresh. I didn't put too much pressure on myself to work out this month. I mean, I'm average probably two, one, two workouts a week. Three was a great week and that's fine. December is about the holidays, you know? It's about drinking eggnog and watching Love Actually. It's about hanging out with your parents and your family and your loved ones and giving gifts and having hangouts and drinking too much and just, you know, hanging out. It's not about like hardcore grinding. So <laughs> I gave myself that time, but then we go into January and now it's time to get back on the grind. So having goals and then going into tomorrow and the rest of this week, knowing what I want to accomplish helps me to stay focused and not lament too much about the year that's passed and the fact that I'm back at work. So <laughs> I'm very excited about this year. Lots of really exciting things ahead of us. And like I said, you're gonna be hearing from me as a ballerina on point with her splits soon. So that'd be super, super cool. So yeah, you know, it's really easy to get excited about that kind of stuff. And I hope that I can inspire you all to do the same, but. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around with my sporadic schedule. I saw that I hit 100 YouTube subscribers recently, so that's awesome, which just means even more that I need to keep consistent so that you don't be disappointed, all of you wonderful people who have subscribed. I want to make sure I have something to post for you, so I'm definitely going to be working on being more consistent. It just might mean that it's less frequent uploads, but it will hopefully mean that the times I say I upload, I actually will. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. We interrupt this broadcast to bring a special update. Editing Kelly has been editing and changed her mind basically about what she said. Now listen to editing, editing, editing Kelly. Yeah. Hello everyone, it is me, Editing Kelly, here to give a small update to my video. Um, it is February 22nd as I am editing this, which is tragic because I definitely filmed it on the first. Um, and already I have a few updates on some of my goals, which is good. I guess <laughs> it's like it's it's news in a good way and a bad way some of it's like nah I'm giving up on that and some of it's like or I'm changing that um and some of it's like oh I've accomplished this so yeah just wanted to give some updates um around what I've said in this video and also a little bit of advice for anyone making goals um based off of this little experience that I've had here so um number one update that I wanted to make is to my goal of posting YouTube videos more consistently. I've decided to stop like labeling myself as a content creator and acting like this is my job and trying to force content to come out on a regular cadence. I have a day job as a product designer. It is nine to five, um, which means that, you know, between the hours of nine to five, I'm, I'm, I'm busy working on that and on call sort of for that. And my job also is kind of all over the place. So it's not like a strict nine to five, but all but to say I'm busy with my day job. And then me and my husband started the business that I mentioned um, earlier in this video. So that takes a lot of my other hours that are available during the day or during the evenings. And YouTube videos are supposed to be something that I do kind of as a hobby, like ballet. So taking a note from my ballet experience and my flexibility journey and all these other things I was doing last year, um, knitting, all of the rest, it's like I was doing those purely for myself and if I decided to share about them, great, but mostly what I focused on was the consistently showing up for me and improving and getting better in those areas for me and like sharing was a nice to have, right? Um, so I think YouTube I need to treat the same way. I've been focusing on the sharing aspect, which tends to get, you know, then I get caught up in the numbers and the follower count and the, um, making that deadline of every Friday and all of that stuff. When in reality, this is supposed to be a hobby for me. It's not a job. You know, there are a lot of content creators out there 
who upload regularly and I mean heck there's a lot of AI generated accounts out these days that are gonna upload constantly every day if that's what you're looking for. I am not that person um, mostly because this isn't my job. If it was my job I would probably have a different outlook on it but because it's not I would like for it to stay a space where I kind of just you know create content I'm really proud of, I'm really interested in, I'm really passionate about versus trying to hit um, a deadline of posting on a regular schedule because the algorithm says you're supposed to. Um, so that goal I am changing. I would like to have more of a focus on making rather than posting. So I have a parked YouTube or excuse me, Instagram account that's more towards my artwork and graphic design work that I haven't been using. So more news to come potentially hopefully around that. But one of the ways I wanted to shift this goal is rather than say make YouTube content on a regular basis, I want to say make content on a regular basis. That can mean anything. That can mean I make a poster design. That can mean I redesign a logo. That can mean I doodle a thing in my sketchbook or something like that. Um, but just make stuff. And then I'll have this well to pull from when I'm ready to post a video and I'm largely be, you know, having an inspiration source that's coming from my own work now and my own ideas um, versus just kind of like reacting to what's popular online and trying to make something that I know will do well, which I do try to stay away from, but it's easy to fall down that rabbit hole if you don't have your own like set set of goals that you're fo focusing on and working towards, which I do have with ballet and flexibility. So taking a leaf from those areas, I'm going to focus on making YouTube content, but it's probably going to be a lot more irregular. <laughs> I think I got a little scared out of posting last year and the end of the year because I was like, Oh, I, I lost my streak. You know, I had this streak of posting every week and then I lost it and then it felt like, oh, I have to come back with something big, some big reason for why I was out. And it's like, no, I'm just going to post when I feel like it, when I make content that I'm proud of and stop putting so much pressure on myself. So I've shifted that goal to be more around making content, like for the sake of making content rather than making content to please an algorithm or to consistently post on a, a particular social channel. So that's number one. The second goal that I would like to update or address is my point, my goal to get on point. I did apply to that cohort that I was mentioning earlier in the video with Broche Ballet and I'm very happy to announce that I was approved and I have started point work. I have my point shoe sitting over there. It's been amazing and I have a lot of content actually on the note of making content I'm really proud of and excited about. I have a lot of content planned around my point journey. I love talking about point. I think it's so fascinating how the point shoes work and how the technique is built and I just want to kind of go into that my experience with that. I filmed some of my first classes. I filmed a video already about um, my fitting experience and you know just being an adult in the ballet space it's like it's so fun to learn all this stuff for the first time as a 30 year old woman. <laughs> it's like I have just no frame of reference for so many of these sensations of putting on a point shoe for the first time and it's just like fascinating to document and to talk about so that's a series that I will definitely be pouring some time and effort into um, just my whole point journey and being an adult ballerina and taking it very seriously and what does that look like and how you can start ballet if you want to and where to look if you want to take it seriously and all these kinds of things so um, that's something that's coming up probably the next video I'll post because um, like I said, I do have a lot of stuff filmed for that already. Nail content will still be coming out sporadically. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of the same stuff. It's just going to be more on a basis of when I feel like it. <laughs> um, then the last update I wanted to make is to my flexibility journey. Earlier in this video, I was talking about how I kind of like unlocked this cadence of like stretching for my splits like three times a week or two times a week and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying that's wrong. In fact, largely what I want to like the point I want to make with this addendum is that it's okay to make a goal and then change it or make a goal and then shift it or change kind of the cadence of it. You know, having an overarching goal means that you can make a lot of interstitial edits as you work your way towards that goal. And flexibility has by and large been the most teachable, I guess, example of that. I have had this goal of getting my splits for over a year and every month I'm changing my routine constantly just trying different things and the beautiful thing about that is like on the one hand you could look over the last year and say okay it's been a year and I don't have my splits what's wrong with me but that's exactly why I did that journal right because now I have a year's worth of data on all the different things that I've tried what worked what didn't what felt good what felt bad and I have kind of a library of different sorts of methods and different stretches and different 
you know, cadences and all kinds of information, but based off of my own personal experience. So, so much about flexibility and training and any kind of physical endeavor is going to be largely personalized for, you know, your body, your schedule, um, all of those sort of unique to you things really determine how successful you're going to be in any of those areas. You can't just like copy paste somebody else's workout regimen and expect to get their results. They have different genetics, different diet. They might live in a different climate. There's a lot of different things that factor into health and wellness. So for me, it's been awesome actually just trying all this different stuff and having no expectations, just like see what makes me progress and see what doesn't. But with my most recent shift, I, I was going, I'm changing, I guess, from like a highly optimized, like do it for a month and it has to make progress or else it's a failure kind of mindset to just kind of stretch and, and see what feels good and work on what feels tight and let it be like a vibe. Let it be like a self-care thing versus like this perfected routine that I have to do exactly to the T. So um, I definitely, obviously, I'm still working to my splits. I still think I'm very close to getting my front splits and can do that this year, but I'm taking the pressure off. I'm stretching every day now, but I'm not making it this like stretch every day for this amount of time in this kind of pose for this amount of time kind of thing. It's now kind of just like go to my mat and see what I need, you know, assess. Today, my shoulders and arms are really tight because I did some pull-ups yesterday. So I'm probably going to work more on my shoulders and upper body than I am going to work on my legs today. But I will probably do a full head-to-toe assessment and then a full head-to-toe like self-care massage rollout foam roll stretching kind of routine later today and that's just become my routine for the last week is like every evening I get on my mat I put on whatever I'm watching currently on Netflix right now it's Grey's Anatomy and I just stretch out what feels tight even work out what feel you know some dynamic stuff can pop in there some PNF kind of stretching can pop in there um, so it's not necessarily all just me passively sitting in splits or passively sitting in stretches, but it's more of like a day by day assessment than it is like a specific regimen that I'm doing. And I'm not necessarily saying this is the most optimal way to get your splits. I'm just saying that I think I needed, again, in general, what I've learned from last year is that I need to take the pressure off. I had a lot of goals last year and then I had a lot of new things come up. And this year, some of those goals needed to get like reduced in order to realistically be accomplishable with uh, respect to the business me and my husband started and just like my life, you know, cooking, eating, sleeping still needs to happen, right? I'd like to, I'm reading my Bible, you know, I have a lot of other things that aren't really on this list. So I don't want to make this huge list of lofty goals and then not do any of them. <laughs> so in an effort to really like target and tighten up and make this realistic, which I did say at the front of this video, I'm editing some of my goals to just make them less optimized, less like results focused and more like lifestyle shifts and just, you know, shift a shift in thinking to change how I objectively view progress. Like progress can just be doing flexibility routines on a daily basis or feeling more comfortable in certain stretches like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be getting closer to the floor. Uh, right? I think in that way lies injury. <laughs> in that way lies forcing yourself because you saw someone on TikTok get their splits in 30 days kind of thing. So just trying to stay away from that and keep these these goals, which are ultimately personal goals. I don't have too, too many career or business focused goals on here, right? They're all like personal, joyful. They should be fun. They should be, make me feel good about myself and be enjoyable to do um, kind of goals are on this list. So with that in mind, I'm going to be mindful <laughs> to keep them that way, keep them fun, keep them in exciting and engaging and not optimize the ever loving <laughs> crap out of them like my UX designer brain wants to do. Um, so yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. And the main takeaway here just is that, you know, you can make goals. We all try, I think, to make goals for New Year's, for New Year's resolutions, but it's also okay to come back to those goals edit them, tweak them. I mean, that's part of the process. It's a year is a great time lapse to be like, okay, we worked on this, what happened, and then learn from that. But you don't have to, to you know, you're going to hit some stuff, you're going to miss some stuff, you don't have to stick to stuff exactly the way because you have more information now today than you did on January 1st. I am a living testament to that. So definitely take the pressure off. If 2024 can be like, take the pressure off, that's probably the mantra I'm going to be living by. Um, so definitely 
don't, you know, stress, don't freak out, don't look at other people and go, well, they're doing this, why am I not doing this? It's like, your journey is your journey and you need to find a way to be content with your journey and your progress and, you know, the strides that you've made and not be overly concerned with what everybody else is doing. So that's something I'm going to be trying to do holistically across the board in 2024. And I just wanted to give that update on sort of how it affects my goals and how it can affect yours and that it's okay, you know? It's all love here, guys. We just need to try our best and, you know, to be happy and be successful in this life. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.